to jump into quite possibly one of my, probably my all-time favorite TV show. Um, I remember seeing it and falling in love with it. I owned all the toys, the models, the board game. Yeah, so we're going to hand it over to David. He's going to talk about Buck Rogers. <laughs> Okay, so, so far what we've covered is basically movies that have come out uh, in the theaters. Uh, but TV obviously wanted to get in on the action as well. So, what it decided to do is go back, it's like, okay, what can we recreate here? And, um, sure enough, it, uh, somebody came up with the idea, let's, let's do Bug Rogers. Um, so they got together, they've uh, cast uh, Gil Gerard. And uh, they also uh, cast Aaron Gray, which you may know from another TV show, uh, Silver Spoons. And um, it was a financially uh, viable sci-fi vi sci -fi show. And um, it was really well done. Um, I don't think that you can see it there, but there was also a robot named Tweaky. Uh, oh yeah, there he is, and he, he is beady, 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 beady. <laughs> I never really understood uh, what that was about, but uh, it was played by Felix Celia, and um, and the whole series uh, was just uh, so popular uh, at the time. So you probably see that uh, a little. Uh, Thing around Tweaky's or Tweaky's neck, and that is actually another uh, artificial intelligence uh, that uh, sort of like was a problem solver on the show. Uh, does anybody remember the name of that? Doctor Theopolis. Theopolis. <laughs> yes, that is it. Um, had a very interesting uh, character or characterization on the show as well. It was a robot that had real character to it. Um, But, uh, yeah, I remember uh, watching this show consistently, and I just remember all kids going around going, beady, 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 beady. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a very endearing uh, thing uh, for Tweaky. Uh, as far as, like, the premise of the show, it was basically uh, every show had its own little plot point, um, something different all the time. I remember that uh, after a few seasons, it kind of like uh, moved on to a different style where uh, Buck Rogers and all the, all the characters uh, got on this uh, explorer ship, uh, much, like, um, much like today you probably remember Star Trek Voyager, it would go from planet to planet and sort of like a Star Trek. Uh, deal where they were out to explore new planets and and uh, thing and one of the characters was uh, uh, started off with the with that season was uh, Hawkman. It was basically a half man, half bird hybrid uh, that um, uh, that lost his uh, mate in the uh, season opener. And uh, he blamed Buck uh, for that, uh, but eventually uh, they became friends, and he joined the uh, crew on the Explorer ship. Spoiler: I'm just, I'm still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. You've only had about 40 years <laughs> to watch it. If you don't know it by now, <laughs> but uh, it was, it was, uh, it was still. Uh, it was still a good show, and one of the things, even my mom liked it because she had a thing for the Hawkman. <laughs> That's one of the weirdest things I probably remember my mom for. So. <laughs> my mom was completely opposite. She loved Buck, so. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, Buck Rogers, Gil Gerard, um, Gil Gerard, Gil Gerard. Uh, played uh, was perfect for the role because he was really sort of a ladies man at the time um, he's almost unrecognizable now he's had a lot of uh, issues since playing but that's what he's mainly known for 
And uh, I do believe that Erin Gray uh, does do uh, conventions. Yep. I remember that uh, she does um, she does sign autographs. So I don't know if she still does that. I know that she's done it quite a, quite a few times in the past. Um, yeah, Buck Rogers is definitely a great great show back back in the day. I mean, how many seasons was it? Like. Yeah, I four think. Four or five, something like that? Yeah, it was like four or five. Two. two. It was two? It was two. two? So they must have really. Uh, there was a lot of episodes. There was a lot of episodes then. TV was a lot of episodes originally, you know, yeah. about 26 yeah. episodes a year. So. Yeah. yeah. Not like now we're. So the episodes. second season. <laughs> the season. Um, if, if you go back to the prior photo that you had of Buck. He's standing with another uh, person in a uniform. Mm -hmm. Buster Crab. It's Buster Crab playing General Gordon, Flash Gordon. <laughs> Who is Buster Crab? He was Flash Gordon. Yeah. Oh, and okay. He, he, he also did the older uh, Buck Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. I dug up those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so Flash Gordon, like what, the 50s serials? Like, the old serials, yeah. 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 With the sparklers in the back of the rocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry. I just got caught in the. Mm -hmm. I, I love no, it, it was, was a great TV was, show. Was, was I mean, show kids up. who like science fiction, they would they would flock to shows like this on yeah. TV. Yeah, I would, it, I, it was kid yeah. friendly and it if was great. If I great... remember correctly, the pilot was almost two hours long. It was like it was an hour and a half, yeah. or something like that. It was like a full, full length film, and like it was just, it was, it was amazing. Especially just, I mean, for myself when I saw it, I probably it was probably it wasn't in seventy nine because I was only three. It was probably. 81, 82, around when I was five or six, and it was in syndication and. They originally just, showed it in the theater because okay. uh, Battlestar Galactica was still on TV. Yep, that is the theatrical trailer. Would you like to see it? Yeah, yeah, let's see it. I see that. Or it's the. Beginning. It's still very watchable today, by the way. Uh, yes. That was the beginning of the shuttle era, yeah, too. Yeah, that's the TV one. It was just on the the pilot, yeah. the two-hour pilot. I thought this is kind of like James Bondish beginning, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> The show holds up better than the trailer. Aaron's yeah. character. <laughs> this is showing like Star Trek or something like this, man. With yeah. Oh. 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 
Yeah. <laughs> Bucks of Playboy. Also, the the voice of Tweaky was done by. Um, yeah, but no blank. The the voice of Sons Bunny. Here's some like you're somebody Sam in Twitter. <laughs> 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 yeah. I Wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the clock. The show is much better than the than the opening. Now this is the <laughs> opening for every single episode? No, this is just the movie uh, <laughs> <laughs> the pilot. Oh, okay. Uh, like I'm telling you, it is literally the longest introduction <laughs> to the Yeah, I mean, it's just like <laughs> I'm the assuming concept. they were guessing like the demographic of single men. Okay. Teenage boys. <laughs> the concept is he's dreaming while he's sleeping. The same <laughs> <laughs> but a time. Should we move on? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to our animated. Now you see where it says written by Glenn A. Larson. Glenn A. Larson was a very prominent uh, person in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Not only did he uh, wrote Buck Rogers there, as you saw, but he also created another sci-fi uh, show. And that show is called Battlestar Galactica. Um, now, probably the younger audience probably remembers Battlestar Galactica, of, um, the uh, new version, but uh, uh, I grew up with watching Battlestar Galactica in the 1970s, and uh, I thought uh, that it was uh, an awesome TV show uh, because it had all the special effects that Star Wars had. It had, it had fights, it had bad guys, and uh, it had a real human story to it, too. And uh, there you see the Cylons, which is uh, the antagonist. <laughs> Uh, the human race. It uh, basically starts off uh, with a movie with a two hour pilot episode where the Cylons obliterate the, all of uh, mankind and whoever's left uh, gathers together in whatever ships they can find and led by the only remaining uh, battle star uh, or battleship that they had uh, at the time. And there you see the Battlestar Galactica uh, that is the ship in the middle, um, Cylon base ship uh, near the top. It had all the uh, features that you wanted from the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars show. Um, but uh, what really, uh, but the thing of it is, is that I really never looked at it as a ripoff of Star Wars. Uh, some people did. But uh, I thought the story was very original. I thought all the ships were original. Um, and the story was original, too. So um, basically, uh, the show uh, was basically, you know, they decided, uh, what are they going to do? Well, they know about this uh, colony of humans that where they originated from. And that was called Earth. And so that's what they did. They set out to uh, seek out uh, Earth. Uh, all, of the, all the time, they were pursued by the Cylons, because the Cylons wanted them all, uh, all obliterated. So... Yeah, one of the things that I loved about this show is it seemed like a lot of the design of the ships and stuff like that were taken from Japanese anime at the time. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, it, even looking at it now, it almost looks like, I mean, I know it didn't come out around the same time, but the Macross saga, like the, the style of the ships, even the storyline is, you know, kind of... Very, very close to what yeah, just now, there I you see. how it was just kind of just looks like something that you would see in a Japanese anime or something off the pages of a manga or something like that. Just come on to it, you know. I'm yeah. Just really, really drawn. Now, there you see basically the main characters. Uh, you'll notice uh, that you have uh, Ad, um, Adama as the uh, captain of uh, the Battlestar Galactica. Uh, you also recognize Dirk Benedict. Uh, he went on, after Battlestar Galactica was basically canceled, uh, he went on to be face of the A-Team. 
And uh, then there's uh, Richard Hatch, who played Apollo, uh, Dama's son. And uh, he was a con favorite. Uh, he would be at Comic-Con every, every time until his, uh, until his passing. Uh, but you can still uh, find uh, Herbert Jefferson there um, as uh, Boomer. Because he's uh, he still uh, frequents con uh, conventions as well. Um, another thing about Battlestar Galactica that it had, like Star Wars had, was its score. Um, the score was just beautiful. Um, just like Star Wars had brought the movie alive, well, it had a score too, and that was another thing that uh, it had. So, can you sing a song? Everybody! Good job. So, thank you. So, uh, so what happened to Battlestar Galactica? It was only, it had a lot of episodes, uh, just like Buck Rogers did for a season. But the production was, it is uh, rumored to be about a million dollars per episode, and that was pretty expensive uh, back in those days, especially for a TV show. Uh, but, they, but the producers didn't realize that they already spent all the money for the sets, the costumes, uh, you know, the special effects. They, they reused the uh, one scene where lasers are being fired at a Cylon Raider and it blows up, and you can basically see that same scene <laughs> in every single episode when they're doing a fight. Um, so, um, but the producers just thought that it was just not going to happen. And uh, even though that it was very popular at a time, they decided to just uh, cut the plug, um, or just uh, take out the plug on it. Uh, and a lot of people were very upset about it at the time. So, very Star Wars esque. Uh, yeah, it is very Star Wars esque. Um, but that was the whole point of Battlestar Galactica. That's why it was uh, created. And um, and you probably noticed uh, there was a little kid uh, there named Foxy. And he uh, was given. He lost his uh, dog. Uh, and the pilot, and it was replaced by a mechanical dog. Also, but they would call it a dagger or whatever. But that's what they would call it. Um, and uh, they were just prominent uh, characters, uh, just as much as everybody else was. Uh, also, one of the most interesting things about Battlestar Galactica is that before every episode was aired, uh, a message was put on the TV screen that says that the government has no uh, information or does not have any uh, information on aliens trying to reach Earth. <laughs> and that was just one of the weird trivia things about that, that, uh, that nobody knows why that was there, or, or what the government was trying to cover up, or what was going on with that. Um, but after it was uh, canceled, uh, a lot of people wanted it back, so they brought it back and called it uh, Battlestar Galactica 1980. And it was a complete disaster. <laughs> uh, there was just, uh, the writing was atrocious. Uh, you know, it's basically where they did find Earth, and um, but they were having trouble trying to uh, integrate themselves or trying to approach uh, the human race, and they just really didn't know how to do it. And they just did all these weird things, like kidnap a, a DJ called Wolfman Jack at the time, <laughs> and it was just it was just that, weird. Did I mean, they use the original cast for that? Uh, most of them, yeah. Uh, I don't think Dirk Benedict returned. He did return for one episode, I know, because I had it on videotape. Um, he, basically, he, uh, his ship got, his, uh, his Colonial Viper got um, uh, damaged in a fight, and he couldn't uh, keep up with the fleet. Um, so the story goes. And he landed on this uh, desert world where... Uh, he found some Cylons and he took bits and parts of it and put it together, 
because he was so lonely, he uh, basically got a functioning Cylon. To what work. I vaguely remember that. You re yeah. Yes. I do remember it because it was, uh, it was, it was Starbuck and, mm. um, and Cy, and it was a really good episode as far as uh, character goes. But the story had so many plot holes in it. It's like, um, you know, and <laughs> I don't know even know where to go to describe it. Um, anyway, it was a disaster. Everybody lost interest, and and it was uh, pretty much uh, doomed. But it, it it still stands up even today, uh, standard, and uh, it remains one of my uh, more favorite uh, sci-fi shows. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move along. Keep moving. We're running out of time shortly here, but uh, I'm gonna move down to Jessica and let her talk about Battle of the Planets. Science Ninja Team Gatchaman. Hey, um, Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, or Battle of the Planets (G Force), uh, was one of the first forays for most Americans into Japanese animation. I remember running home when, from elementary school and turning on CBS at 3.30 and just sitting down and watching it, and you're, the, the score would come out, and you're like, I love this show. And we're like, again, it was the first time people really saw Japanese animation that was accessible to us. And what we didn't know at the time, as a kids, was that this was actually more adult show. It was, they, the, adapt, the adaptation was uh, very faithful to the, to, the origin, but they got there was profanity, there was nudity, excessive violence, there was transgen transgender uh, characters, and that's not going to fly, especially not in 1979. It barely flies now. Um, there was a Star Wars connection. It was when it was purchased by uh, Sandy Frank Productions. They renamed it Battle of the Planets. Gee, does that sound like something that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you look at the characters, they are also parallels to the Star Wars universe. Um, since, since they brought it here, there's been several other adaptations, but most people remember the original uh, G-Force and Battle of the Planets. Can I get the next slide, please? Thank you. Mark is the first person you meet. He is the leader of the crew. Um, he is a pilot whose father disappeared under mysterious circumstances. He's the ideal role model. He's calmer. He uses the bird ring. And the trivia on this one is, if you look at his uh, the bird ring, the uh, the weapon he uses, uh, it's also referenced in Batman Beyond. And if you look at what Bat uh, what Batman uses, what Terry uses in Batman Beyond, it's the the design is almost the same. And same with Teen Titans, Robin's bird ring, same thing. It's because the people that did the character design, the gentleman that did it was a very big fan of older animation, and that's where he got the characters I saw. But gee, pilot, leader, parent that was disappearing under some mysterious circumstances sounds like some farm boy we know. Next slide, please. Then there's Jason. He's the bad boy. He was uh, second in command. He, um, and he, you know, he gets along with Mark, but you know, he really wants to be in charge. He's a race car driver. driver. He's an orphan, don't really know his backstory very much, and uh, in the original, in the um, original Japanese, his parents were actually residents of, of the alien galaxy that wants to take over the Earth, but they were just, they were killed and when they, and he was the only one that escaped. But let's see, uh, bad boy can fly, race car driver, gee, I wonder who that could be, maybe a smuggler we know? Next slide, please. Next is Princess. Gee, I wonder who that is. <laughs> she was modeled after a very famous uh, um, Japanese actress, uh, Yuko Inatsu. Um, her na last name is never given in either one of them. They finally came up with one, and I can tell you, I don't remember what it is. Um, she was raised in an or orphanage. She um, rode a motorcycle. She was an engineer, which was unusual for depicting women, especially in car animation and cartoons then, because women were seen as very reactive, very emotional. It was an unusual to see a female character in a cartoon that actually had it together. And this was one of the first ones you saw. Um, she also used yo-yos in a weapon, which I really loved. And um, let's see, she and Mark were a couple in the United, in the U.S. States version. In Japan, he didn't want anything to do with her, and she was really mad about it. Next slide, please. <laughs> Kia is, um, 
he was originally named Jinpei in the um, in the Japanese, raised in the same orphanage as Jun. So Jun sees him as a you know younger brother. Yes. Um, in the adaptation, he uses uh, clicks and words and punctuating speech. And a lot of people thought it was because in the original translation that he used a lot of profanity and, and when in fact it was not true. He was actually very soft-spoken in the original animation. Um, he is also seen here, he was, uh, the clicks and words were explained away by saying he was a genetically engineered uh, life, life, uh, or life form that uh, June was with. And, um, okay, next slide please. And then finally, Tiny, um, son of the fisherman. Um, he's the main pilot of, of the Phoenix, which was the planet, which was the uh, ship. Um, sounds like Chewie. And um, he was basically seen as the comic relief. Next slide, please. Zoltar was the evil big bad. Um, he was the field commander for um, uh, Spectra, Galacto in the original. Um, and he was originally a paraphilic. This is one of the biggest changes they made between the Japanese and uh, the American. Here they used, in, in, for the United States, he, they introduced four different characters to explain why there were four, why he had a feminine side. Um, and finally, they, they basically lost interest in um, disguising it and introduced his sister, Mala Latros. Um, and let's see. And the character was originally introduced in episode one or two, but we only got 85 episodes. Next slide, please. Again, 85 episodes were used for broadcast in the United States, and the characters were added, Seven's Arc 7, and because the runtime didn't hit the 22 minutes we needed. So they would add all of these things. They added um, One Rover One, they added Seven's Arc 7, and they finally added Susan, who was running the uh, uh, outpost on Pluto, the, the first, uh, the, uh, you know, the Alpos on Pluto that was an uh, early warning system. They had lots of really great voice actors, you know, Casey Case and Ron Shell, and they had, and as they got farther and farther, they actually, they, with every other adaptation, they had better actors and better voice actors, so there's, there's a ton of them. Um, uh, let's see. There was a movie that was supposed to be released, um, Back in the back in the day, but that actually didn't happen. <coughs> they actually did release a live action movie um, about two or three years ago, 2016, 2017, which was actually pretty good. Um, Saban finally got the when okay, Filmation lost the rights, or Sandy Frank Ross lost the rights, and then Saban picked them up and started re-releasing them, remaking them as the Eagle Riders. And there's been comic books released and everything like that. And I know he said five minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up. <laughs> so, but that's it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so uh, we're running out of time. There was other uh, movies and TV shows we wanted to cover, but I'll, I'll just mention them really quick. I, um, I worked on a lot on the black hole, but <laughs> we're running out of time. Uh, I'll just mention that it was uh, Disney's first PG film and first uh, serious attempt on science fiction. Um, it didn't do very well in the uh, box office, but it's a it, it's a cult classic. It's it's cheesy, but it's it's a fun movie. If you have not seen that, I recommend uh, to watch it. And um, I was gonna cover uh, Moonraker. Um, so in 1977, the Bond film was Spy Love Me. And if you ever see at the, the very end credits, the Spy You Love Me, it says James Bond will return and for your eyes only. Well, then Star Wars happened, and uh, so James Bond actually got affected from Star Wars, uh, the success. So they decided to do Moonraker. Um, uh, the novel wasn't one of the favorites of the uh, Bond fans, and the movie's totally different from the novel. Uh, so uh, they did uh, James Bond, and they changed the character of Jaws. They made him a hero, as he was a villain in the first one. And uh, so, and we were going to cover, um, Todd was going to talk about Star Blazers, another famous anime that uh, had a lot to do with um, with the popularity of uh, animation. Uh, 
Unfortunately, George Lucas blocked the third season, so that's why a lot of people haven't heard of that. Because then after that, the success of Gundam and Macross came to the United States. Um, and we were going to go into some of the cheesy sci-fi movies of 79, but uh, we're running out of time. Uh, they, they did a, a H.G. Wells story, but um, the budget wasn't very good. It was... Um, no, it was something else. But actually, uh, Time After Time was a good movie that had Malcolm McDowell in it. And um, Mad Max was released in, uh, in Australia that the U.S. release came in 1980. But that's, a, that's another big uh, iconic film with uh, Wasteland. Do you have any final things, Todd? I want to know what just what that big deal was on that last scene. <laughs> that what is Mad that? Max. That's the lower of Mad Max's car. Yeah. That was that is. Yeah, Todd, you didn't know that. I'm, I'm, the train. I'm like, is this a pilot, a plane's landing gear, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's part of the big engine. Yeah, um, I'll just say with the Star Blazers, um, it was it started in like the '74, so Japan came over to the U.S. In '79, and uh, it was known as Star Blazers. But in Japan, it was Space Battleship Yamamoto, um, and really um, became uh, the first real um, uh, uh, an not anim uh, animation. Um, uh, I'm blanking on the word. Uh, what's another word for an uh, anime? Japanese uh, animation. You know, yeah. Animation. Uh, that's what it was really known as at the time. Manga is the. Manga is the print. Um, I can't recall. Never mind. Next. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming to the panel. Um, most of you are science fiction coalition members. <laughs> uh, Thanks for not leaving us here yeah. by ourselves. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank if you you're coming. returning tomorrow, come by our 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 booth and where we have a nice science fiction uh, display. Yeah, that was some of the cheesy sci-fi stuff we were going to cover. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. we have uh, some of the stuff we're talking about on display at our booth. So uh, thank you for for coming to this panel. Thank you.